Archaeologists and antiquarians have argued for centuries about who put up this great erection of stones here. The best bet seemed to be the Druids, because the Druids uh, were known to have existed here in Britain before Caesar arrived. In fact, Caesar described the Druids. So, 18th century antiquarians, such as William Stukeley, used to draw fanciful pictures of the Druids as they thought taking part in ceremonies around Stonehenge and similar kinds of circles. Now, we're almost certain today that this conception is absolutely wrong. And the kind of people who you see taking part in Druid ceremonies here on Midsummer Morning are nothing more than a 19th century invention. Druids, in fact, what we do know about them, they had a strong priestly class who used to gather on the whole in oak groves where their secret ceremonies took place. They were a bloodthirsty uh, race. Caesar describes them as hanging people up in baskets and burning them. Otherwise, we know that they were indeed expert astronomers. If, as Hitching and other investigators have concluded, the architects of Stonehenge were not the Druids, then who did design and build it? Far from being mere hunters or cave dwellers, the prehistoric Stonehengers seem suddenly to have become possessed of a superior, highly sophisticated intelligence. Otherwise, they could never have devoted their total energies to a grid that covered all England and focused on the axis of Stonehenge. One must wonder, from where did they get this incredible spurt of knowledge? A spurt that was 5,000 years ahead of its time. The answer may never be known, but the stones still have a power for many who worship in the manner of the Druids. And Stonehenge still intrigues men who seek to understand the workings of an ancient machine. I wonder if they were not worshipping a new type of god to us, a god of time. Uh, the idea just comes to me now that perhaps uh, the repetitive uh, security of time, following time, was of value to them. And perhaps even Stonehenge itself was built to uh, perhaps defeat the ravages of time in that time had a concept to them. If ever we can find out uh, an idea that explains what they did, it will be really dramatic. I don't feel that we've come close to any idea yet, but can, you can imagine a god of time. We don't have it. We hate time, but maybe they look forward to it. What were the Stonehengers looking forward to? Was it merely the observations of the cycles of time, or the predictions of eclipses? Or did they expect some even more magical communication from the outer cosmos, where time has no limits? Stonehenge is not alone as a riddle of ancient design. In the thick jungles of the Yucatan Peninsula, an ancient observatory called the Caracol charted the phases of Venus as accurately as 20th century telescopes. Buried deep within the same jungle, a Mayan pyramid was aligned to the midsummer sun. 6,000 miles away, Egyptian pyramids mapped the rising and the setting sun on the same day. And in the distant past of India, holy men gathered to watch the sky. For what were they waiting? We have some understanding now of the possible explanation for Stonehenge and the other monuments around the world that have puzzled investigators for so long. The question which still eludes us is who erected these working monuments? Clearly, they were the work of people more advanced than we had thought possible for that time. We can speculate that our ancestors were possessed of knowledge that was somehow lost to succeeding generations. Or perhaps they had help. <laughs> 